I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. And he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for man. Let them exalt him in the assembly of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. sing praises to thee among the nations. For thy steadfast love is great, is great to the heavens, and thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be over all the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory I exalt thee, I exalt thee, O Lord, I exalt thee, I exalt thee, I exalt thee, O Thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. For Thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. I exalt thee, I exalt thee, 
I exalt Thee, O Lord. I exalt Thee, I exalt Thee, I exalt Thee, O Good morning. We are continuing our journey through the Bible. We are picking up today in Exodus chapter 25, verse 1, still about 1446 B.C. It's been a very eventful time. We're in the middle of hearing God's instructions to his people, starting with the offerings for the tabernacle. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel that everyone who wants to may bring me an offering. Here's a list of items you may accept on my behalf gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, fine linen, goat hair for cloth, tanned ram skins, and fine goatskin leather, acacia wood, olive oil for the lamps, spices for the anointing oil, and the fragrant incense, onyx stones, and other stones to be set in the ephod and the chest piece. I want the people of Israel to build me a sacred residence for I can live among them. You must make this tabernacle and its furnishings exactly according to the plans I will show you. Plans for the ark, beginning in Exodus 25, verse 10. Make an ark of acacia wood, a sacred chest, three and three quarters feet long, two and a quarter feet wide, and two and a quarter feet high. Overlay its inside and outside with pure gold, and put a molding of gold all around it. Cast four rings of gold for it, and attach them to its four feet, two rings on each side. Make poles from acacia wood, and overlay them with gold. Fit the poles into the rings at the sides of the ark to carry. These carrying poles must never be taken from the rings. They are to be left there permanently. When the ark is finished, place inside it the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, which I will give to you. Then make the ark's cover, the place of atonement, out of pure gold. It must be three and three quarters feet long and two and a quarter feet wide. Then use hammered gold to make two cherubim and place them at the two ends of the atonement cover. Attach the cherubim to each end of the atonement cover. Make it all one piece. The cherubim will face each other, looking down on the atonement cover with their wings spread out above it. Place inside the ark the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, which I will give to you. Then put the atonement cover on top of the ark. I will meet with you there and talk to you from above the atonement cover between the gold cherubim that hover over the ark of the covenant. From there I will give you my commands for the people of Israel. Plans for the table. Beginning in Exodus 25 verse 23. Then make a table of acacia wood, three feet long, one and a half feet wide, and two and a half feet high. Overlay it with pure gold and run a molding of gold around it. Put a rim about three inches wide around the top edge and put a gold molding all around the rim. Make four gold rings and put the rings at the four corners of the four legs close to the rim around the table top. These rings will support the poles used to carry the table. Make these poles from acacia wood and overlay them with gold. And make gold plates and dishes as well as pitchers and bowls to be used in pouring out drink offerings. You must always keep the special bread of the presents on the table before me. Plans for the lampstand. Getting in Exodus 25, 31. Make a lampstand of pure hammered gold. The entire lampstand and its decorations will be one piece. The base, center, stem, lamp, cups, buds, and blossoms. I will have six branches, three branches going out from each side of the center stem. Each of the six branches will hold a cup shaped like an almond blossom, complete with buds and petals. The center stem of the lamp stem will be decorated with four almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. 
One blossom will be set beneath each pair of branches where they extend from the center stem. The decorations and branches must all be one piece with the stem, and they must be hammered from pure gold. Then make the seven lamps for the lampstand, and set them so they reflect their light forward. The lamp snuffers and trays must also be made of pure gold. You will need 75 pounds of pure gold for the lampstand and its accessories. Be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. Plans for the Tabernacle Beginning in Exodus 26 verse 1 Make the tabernacle from ten sheets of fine linen. These sheets are to be decorated with blue, purple, and scarlet yarn with figures of cherubim skillfully embroidered into them. Each sheet must be 42 feet long, 6 feet wide, and 10 sheets must be exactly the same side. Join five of these sheets together in one set, then join the other five sheets into a second set. Put loops of blue yarn along the edges of the last sheet in each set. The 50 loops along the edge of one set are to match the 50 loops along the edge of the other. Then make 50 gold clasps to fasten the loops of the two sets of sheets together, making the tabernacle a single unit. Many heavy sheets of cloth from goat hair, oh, sorry, make heavy sheets of cloth from goat hair to cover the tabernacle. There must be 11 of these sheets, each 45 feet long and 6 feet wide. All 11 of these sheets must be exactly the same. Join five of these together into one set and join the other six into a second set. The sixth sheet of the second set is to be doubled over at the entrance at the scarlet tent. At the sacred tent, put 50 loops along the edge of the last sheet in each set and fasten them together with 50 bronze clasps. In this way, the two sets will become a single unit. An extra half sheet of this roof covering will be left to hang over the back of the tabernacle and the covering will hang down an extra 18 inches on each side. On top of these coverings, place a layer of tanned ram skins and over them put a layer of fine goatskin leather. This will complete the roof covering. The framework of the tabernacle will consist of frames made of acacia wood. Each frame must be 15 feet high and two and a quarter feet wide. There will be two pegs on each frame so they can be joined to the next frame. All the frames must be made this way. 20 of these frames will support the south side of the tabernacle. They will fit into 40 silver bases, two bases under each frame. On the north side, there will also be 20 of these frames with their 40 silver bases, two bases for each frame. On the west side, there will be six frames along with an extra frame at each corner. These corner frames will be connected at the bottom and firmly attached at the top with a single ring forming a single unit. Both of these corner frames will be made the same way. So there will be eight frames on that end of the tabernacle, supported by 16 silver bases, two bases under each frame. Make crossbars of acacia wood to run across the frames, five crossbars for the north side of the tabernacle and five for the south side. Also make five crossbars for the rear of the tabernacle, which will face westward. The middle crossbar, halfway up the frames, will run all the way from one end of the tabernacle to the other. Overlay the frames with gold and make gold rings to support the crossbars. Overlay the crossbars with gold as well. Set up this tabernacle according to the design you were shown on a mountain. Across the inside of the tabernacle hang a special curtain made of fine linen with cherubim skillfully embroidered into the cloth using blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. Hang this inner curtain on gold hooks set into four posts made from acacia wood and overlaid with gold. The posts will fit into silver bases. When the inner curtain is in place, put the Ark of the Covenant behind it. This curtain will celebrate the holy, separate the holy place from the most holy place. Then put the Ark's cover, the place of atonement, on top of the Ark of the Covenant inside the most holy place. Place the table and the lampstand across the room from each other outside the inner curtain. The lampstand must be placed on the south side and the table must be set toward the north. Make another curtain from fine linen for the entrance of the sacred tent and embroider exquisite designs into it. 
using blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. Hang this curtain on gold hooks set into five posts, made from a K of wood and overlaid with gold. The post will fit into five bronze bases. Plans for the altar of burnt offering, beginning in Exodus 27, verse 1. Using a K of wood, make a square altar seven and a half feet wide, seven and a half feet long, and four and a half feet high. Make a horn at each of the four corners of the altar so the horns and altar are all one piece. Overlay the altar and its horns with bronze. The ash buckets, shovel, basin, meat hooks, and fire pans will all be made of bronze. Make a bronze grating with a metal ring at each corner. Fit the grating halfway down into the firebox, resting it on the ledge built there. For moving the altar, make poles from a K of wood and overlay them with bronze. To carry it, put the poles into the rings at two sides of the altar. The altar must be hollow, made from planks. Be careful to build it just as you were shown on the mountain. Plans for the courtyard, beginning in Exodus 27 verse 9. Then make a courtyard for the tabernacle, enclosed with curtains made from fine linen. On the south side, the curtains will stretch for 150 feet. They will be held up by 20 bronze posts that fit into 20 bronze bases. The curtains will be held up with silver hooks attached to the silver rods that are attached to the posts. It will be the same on the north side of the courtyard. 150 feet of curtains held up by 20 posts fitted into bronze bases with silver hooks and rods. The curtains on the west end of the courtyard will be 75 feet long, supported by 10 posts set into 10 bases. The east end will also be 75 feet long. The courtyard entrance will be on the east end, flanked, flanked by two curtains. The curtain on the right side will be two and a half feet long, supported by three posts set into three bases. The curtain on the left side will also be two and a half feet long, supported by three posts set into three bases. For the entrance to the courtyard, make a curtain that is 30 feet long. Fashion it from fine linen and decorate it with beautiful embroidery in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. It will be attached to four posts that fit into four bases. All the posts around the courtyard must be connected by silver rods using silver hooks. The posts are to be set in solid bronze bases. So the entire courtyard will be 150 feet long and 75 feet wide with curtain walls seven and a half feet high made from fine linen. The bases supporting its walls will be made of bronze. All the articles used in the work of the tabernacle, including all the tent pegs used to support the tabernacle and the courtyard curtains must be made of bronze. Tell the people of Israel to bring you pure olive oil for the lampstand so it can be kept burning continually. The lampstand will be placed outside the inner curtain of the most holy place in the tabernacle. Aaron and his sons will keep the lamps burning in the Lord's presence day and night. This is a permanent law for the people of Israel. It must be kept by all future generations. Clothing for the priest, beginning in Exodus 28 verse one. Your brother Aaron, and his sons Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar will be set apart from the common people. They will be my priests and will minister to me. Make special clothing for Aaron to show his separation to God. Beautiful garments that will lend dignity to his work. Instruct all those who have special skills as tailors to make the garments that will set Aaron apart from everyone else so he may serve me as a priest. They are to make a chest piece, an ephod, a robe, an embroidered tunic, a turban, and a sash. They will also make special garments for Aaron's sons to wear when they serve as priests before me. These items must be made of fine linen cloth, embroidered with gold thread, and blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. Design of the ephod, beginning in Exodus 28, 6. The ephod must be made of fine linen cloth and skillfully embroidered with gold thread and blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. It will consist of two pieces, front and back, joined at the shoulders with two shoulder pieces. And the sash will be made of the same materials, fine linen cloth embroidered with gold thread and blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. Take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the tribes of Israel. Six names will be on one stone, 
naming all the tribes in the order of their ancestors' births. Engrave these names in the same way a jib cutter engraves a seal. Mount the stones in gold ring settings. Fasten the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as memorial stones for the people of Israel. Aaron will carry these names before the Lord as a constant reminder. The settings are to be made of gold filigree, and two cords made of pure gold will be attached to the settings on the shoulders of the ephod. Design of the chest piece, beginning in Exodus 28, verse 15. Then, with the most careful workmanship, make a chest piece that will be used to determine God's will. Use the same materials as you did for the ephod. Fine, line, fine linen cloth embroidered with gold thread and blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. This chest piece will be made of two folds of cloth, forming a pouch nine inches square. Four rows of gemstones will be attached to it. The first row will contain a red carnelian, a chrysolite, and an emerald. The second row will contain a turquoise, a sapphire, and a white moonstone. The third row will contain a jacinth, an agate, and an amethyst. The fourth row will contain a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. All these stones will be set in gold. Each stone will represent one of the tribes of Israel, and the name of that tribe will be engraved on it as though it were a seal. To attach the chest piece to the ephod, make braided cords of pure gold. Then make two gold rings and attach them to the top corners of the chest piece. The two gold cords will go through the rings on the chest piece, and the ends of the cords will be tied to the gold settings on the shoulder pieces of the ephod. Then make two more gold rings and attach them to the two lower inside corners of the chest piece next to the ephod. And make two more gold rings and attach them to the ephod near the sash. Then attach the bottom rings of the chest piece to the rings on the ephod with blue cords. This will hold the chest piece securely to the ephod above the beautiful sash. In this way, Aaron will carry the names of the tribes of Israel on the chest piece over his heart when he goes into the presence of the Lord in the holy place. Thus the Lord will be reminded of his people continually. Insert into the pocket of the chest piece the Urim and Thummim to be carried over Aaron's heart when he goes into the Lord's presence. Thus Aaron will always carry the objects used to determine the Lord's will for his people whenever he goes in before the Lord. Additional clothing for the priest, getting in Exodus 28, 31. Make the robe of the ephod entirely of blue cloth, with an opening for Aaron's head in the middle of it. The opening will be reinforced by a woven collar so it will not tear. Make pomegranates out of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and attach them to the hem of the robe, with gold bells between them. The gold bells and pomegranates are to alternate all the way around the hem. Aaron will wear this robe whenever he enters the holy place to minister to the Lord, and the bells will tinkle as he goes in and out of the Lord's presence. If he wears it, he will not die. Next, make a medallion of pure gold. Using the techniques of an engraver, inscribe it with these words, Set apart as holy to the Lord. This medallion will be attached to the front of Aaron's turban by means of a blue cord. Aaron will wear it on his forehead, thus bearing the guilt connected with any errors regarding the sacred offerings of the people of Israel. He must always wear it, so the Lord will accept the people. Weave Aaron's patterned tunic from fine linen cloth. Fashion the turban out of this linen as well. Also make him an embroidered sash. Then for the sons of Aaron, make tunics, sashes, and headdresses to give them dignity and respect. Clothe Aaron and his sons with these garments, and then anoint and ordain them. Set them apart as holy, so they can serve as my priests. Also make linen underclothes for them, to be worn next to their bodies, reaching from waist to thigh. These must be worn whenever Aaron and his sons enter the tabernacle, or approach the altar in the holy place to perform their duties. Thus they will not incur guilt or die. This law is permanent for Aaron and his descendants. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Boy, today's reading was a little long, wasn't it? And I, the music at the beginning, I kind of messed up. So, but the uh, closing song this morning is kind of fast. So, hopefully, 
it'll be. Right. Um, take a deep breath and sing along with me. Good morning, everybody. Let's see who we have on here. Good morning, Rhonda. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, Mary Nell. Good morning, Mary Beth. Good morning, Patty and John. Good morning, Janie. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Troy. Good morning, Beth and Winston and Sophie. Good morning, Anne and Katie and Kara. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Shirley and Pe uh, Shirley, sorry. <laughs> Good morning, Jim and Peggy. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And we'll be back tomorrow morning at 8. Have a wonderful day.